Johnny Appleseed by Eva Moore. Alone in the woods, the road and back of the Chapman house twisted and turned and went right down to the river. Johnny Chapman came running down the road. He was on his way to his new job, helping Mr. Crawford in the apple orchard. But first, he wanted to see his friends. Johnny ran across the little bridge that went over the river. He ran into the dark woods on the other side, and then he stopped running. It was quiet in the woods, almost quiet. Johnny could hear the birds singing. He could hear the leaves softly blowing in the wind. A rabbit ran up to meet Johnny. A squirrel jumped from one big tree to another to get nearer to him. Here are my friends, thought Johnny, here in the woods. The animals of the forest were not afraid of Johnny Chapman. Johnny brought food to them and he took care of sick or hurt animals he found. Johnny lived in a little town in Massachusetts. He was only 10 years old, but he often spent days and days alone in the woods. Johnny's stepmother was too busy taking care of her 10 other children to look after him. Sometimes she did not even know he was gone. Johnny liked to be alone in the woods. He liked to play in the river that ran near the woods. He liked to swim in the cool water. But most of all, he liked to ride down the river on a raft he had built from old fallen trees. Johnny ate the berries that grew wild in the woods. He played with animals. Sometimes Johnny brought his Bible into the woods with him. He read aloud to the animals and they would come to him as if they understood the words. At night, he lay on the ground and watched the stars until he fell asleep. And Johnny would talk to the stars and to the animals. He would tell them, Someday I will be a missionary, a preacher. I will go all around the country telling people about God and the Bible. But this afternoon, Johnny did not have time to play with his friends or to read to them from his Bible. He had to hurry. Mr. Crawford, the orchard man, was waiting for him in the apple orchard. So Johnny waved goodbye to the rabbit and the squirrel and the singing birds. Barefoot, he ran down the path to Mr. Crawford's orchard. Red ripe apples were hanging from the branches of every tree. Mr. Crawford's apple orchard. To look at an apple tree always made Johnny happy. He liked working the orchard with Mr. Crawford. Mr. Crawford told Johnny all about the apple trees. Apple trees are strong trees, Johnny, he said as they walked through the orchard. An apple tree can grow in almost any kind of soil. Where did the first apple trees grow? Johnny asked. I don't know, Johnny, said Mr. Crawford. Apples are one of the oldest fruits ever grown. You can find the word apple even in the Bible. Johnny smiled. Yes, Mr. Crawford said. An apple tree is a great thing. An apple is a great thing. There are so many kinds of apples, Johnny, and so many ways to use them. You can eat apples right off the tree, or you can make them into apple pies and apple cakes and apple butter and apple sauce and apple cider. You can roast apples, bake apples, and boil apples, said Mr. Crawford. He picked an apple from one of the trees and took a bite. The juice rolled down his chin, and they're good for you, he said. Mr. Crawford showed Johnny how to pick an apple off the tree the right way without breaking the twig. Sue Johnny was picking one apple after another and putting them into the basket at his feet. Every apple seemed to be waiting just for him. Johnny goes away. The years passed. Now Johnny was a young man of 18. He was very thin and not very tall, but he was very strong. People around Johnny were talking about going west. Many were moving into the wilderness, into western Pennsylvania and the territories of Ohio and Indiana. These places seemed very far away to the people living in Massachusetts. There, were, there was plenty of rich land in these territories. There was plenty of room for more farms. Johnny wanted to see the wilderness for himself, so he said goodbye to his father and his stepmother and all the children. He said goodbye to Mr. Crawford. Don't forget all I told you about apples, Johnny, said Mr. Crawford. He gave Johnny some apples to take with him, and now it's time for Johnny to say goodbye to the woods and all his animal friends. I will miss all of you, he said. I will think of you when I see your brothers in the far-off land called the West. Goodbye, little friends, said Johnny, and he walked away through the woods. Johnny Chapman walked away from his home in Massachusetts, and he walked for many, many miles, and he walked for many, many weeks. He walked through valleys and over mountains and through deep woods. One day, he came to a small settlement just at the beginning of the Great Ohio River. This was Fort Pitt. 
Johnny liked this settlement. He built a house for himself near the river. He started a farm. But Johnny missed the apple trees he had seen every day in Mr. Crawford's orchard. So Johnny went to see nearby farmers who owned cider mills. In the mills were cider presses that squeezed apples into juice. The seeds were thrown away. Johnny gathered these seeds and brought them back to his farm in large linen bags. He washed the seeds and sorted out the good ones from the bad ones, and then, with the very best seeds, he planted an orchard of his own. The Apple Seed Man Day by day, John Chapman took care of his orchard. He watched his seeds grow into little seedlings, and he watched his seedlings grow into big, strong trees. In about five years, his trees were bearing fruit. Now there were many people going even farther west than Fort Pitt. These pioneers were moving their families out into the wilderness. They would clear the land and build new homes. Many pioneers stopped by Johnny's house to rest. Johnny always welcomed them. If they needed milk, Johnny gave them milk from his own cows, and he gave them butter. He gave them wild honey, too, that he had gathered in the woods. Sometimes people would ask Johnny, Why do you give us so much honey away? You could sell it for a good price. If the bees don't work for money, then why should I, was Johnny's answer. Johnny would rather give things away than sell them. When he'd eat anybody, he sold some of his seedlings. But if a person could not afford to pay much, Johnny would sell him a tree for just a few pennies. Most of all, Johnny liked to give apples to the pioneers. He always had some apples on hand, even in seasons when there was no fruit on the trees. Johnny kept apples in a big cave. A spring in the center of the cave made the earth around the apples cool and wet. The cool, wet earth kept the apples from spoiling. Johnny tried to tell the pioneers all the ways they could use apples. He was sure they would need apple trees out in the wilderness. Apples are nature's gift to us, said Johnny. You will need the fruit for food. You will need apples to trade for other things. Johnny showed the pioneers his own trees. He wanted to give each one of them a little apple tree to take with him. He said, take these seedlings into the wilderness, plant it in the ground, take care of it, and watch it grow. Someday we'll give you apples like these. Then you will see how important apples are to you. The pioneers would take Johnny's honey, but many of them shook their heads at his seedling trees. We cannot carry a little tree. We have no room in our wagons. Besides, the tree is too small and weak. The branches will break. It will die before we get to our new land. Johnny did not want his apple trees to die. He thought of another way to help the pioneers. Bring apple trees into the west. Soon he was giving each pioneer a small bag of seeds to take with him and plant near his new home. But still some shook their heads no, said one. Apple trees will not grow in this land. It is too wild. If the land is too wild for apple trees, it is not fit place for women and children, said Johnny. And he had his way. When the pioneers left his house, most of them had a small bag of apple seeds. The pioneers began to call the apple seed man. They called his orchard the wonder of the wilderness. At night, Johnny dreamed of all the apple trees the pioneers, pioneers were going to plant. He dreamed of acres and acres of orchards blooming in the spring with white blossoms. He dreamed of acres and acres of apples to harvest in the fall. But Johnny was worried. What if the pioneers forgot to plant the seeds he gave them? His dream would never come true if the pioneers did not plant the seeds. What can I do? He asked his trees. What can I do? He asked the stars. The trees waved at him. The stars winked at him. Then the answer came to him. He decided to go into the wilderness himself. He would go from place to place where apples were needed. I will show the pioneers how to plant trees, Johnny said. Johnny had lived in Fort Pitt for 12 years. He had worked hard to make a good farm and a good orchard. Now he was good to leave. He was going to set out for the territory of Ohio. But who would take care of the house he had built? Who would take care of the orchard he had planted? Johnny knew a poor woman in who, who had children to look after and no place to live, so he gave his house and his orchard and his whole farm to her. The woman was so happy she cried, and Johnny was happy too. He knew that he had an important job to do. Johnny makes a friend. What was the fastest way to get to Ohio? Johnny looked at the fast-moving Ohio River. The river will take me there, he said. Johnny put some big leather bags full of apple seeds into a canoe. He put other things into another canoe, some food, a cooking pan, some medicine to cure any sick people or animals he found in the wilderness, and his Bible. 
Johnny still dreamed of being a missionary preacher. Now, he thought, he could read to the pioneers from his Bible. He could tell them that even in the wilderness, God was with them. Johnny tied the two canoes together and started down the Ohio River. It was early spring. The ice had just melted, and the currents in the water were very strong. They pulled and pushed at Johnny's canoes, but Johnny knew how to handle the terrible currents. As a boy, he had spent many hours riding on his log raft. He remembered the way he steered the raft along the river in Massachusetts. Johnny paddled his canoes down the Ohio River for many miles. Every night he stopped and tied his canoes to a tree on the bank of the river. He cooked his supper in his cooking pan. Then he found wild berries in the woods to eat, and he made a bed of small twigs and leaves to sleep on. One night Johnny was awakened by a terrible howl. What could it be? He looked all around him. He saw a dark shadow. It was a wolf. Its foot was caught in a trap. Quickly, Johnny took the wolf's foot out of the trap. There now, poor fellow, he said. I will take care of you. Johnny tore his shirt to make a bandage for the wolf's foot. He gave the wolf some of the medicine he had brought with him. Johnny stayed with the wolf until it was well enough to walk. Now go back to your home, said Johnny to the wolf. But the wolf did not run back into the woods. It jumped into one of the canoes like a dog who stays with its master. The wolf wanted to stay with Johnny. Away they went, together in the canoes, the wild wolf and the apple seed man. Merida, Ohio. After many weeks, Johnny reached a settlement in the state of Ohio. When he stopped his canoes, many people came to see this strange looking man. Johnny's clothes hung like rags on his thin body. He was barefoot. He had put his cooking pan on his head and was wearing it like a hat. What village is this? Johnny asked the pioneers. This is Marietta, Ohio, they said. Where do you come from? I have come down the Ohio River, Johnny said. I have some trees for you. He held up a leather bag. What's that? The people asked. Apple seeds, Johnny said. We will plant apple trees all over this wilderness. Some of the people laughed. There are many more important things to do, they told Johnny, but Johnny paid no attention. Are there air orchards here now, he asked. Most of us don't have any time to plant orchards, someone said. We have homes to build and crops to grow, but there is an apple tree growing in Dr. True's yard. Johnny hurried to see Dr. True. The tree was there all right. It was full of pink and white blossoms that filled the air with a wonderful smell. For a long time, Johnny could only look, and then he said, the time will come when there will be many trees like this, one blooming in these settlements. Dr. True understood Johnny's dream. He didn't laugh. He wanted to help. And there were others who wanted to help Johnny, too. A man named Command Commandant Whipple of the United States Navy gave Johnny a plot of land. Plant your orchard here, he told Johnny. Commandant Whipple let men out of the Navy jail to help Johnny plant the seeds. When... The little trees started to grow. The men would come back to help him take care of the orchard. Johnny worked very hard, and when the orchard was all planted, he built a fence around it so that no stray animals could get in and dig up the seeds. But just as Johnny's orchard was beginning to grow, a terrible disease, typhoid fever, struck the people of Meretta. It took many lives. John Chapman fell in ill with the fever. He became very weak. Everyone thought he was going to die. Dr. True worked hard to keep him alive. Little by little, the apple seed man grew stronger. Winter was coming, and Dr. True begged Johnny to stay with him until the cold weather was over. Stay here until you are completely well, said Dr. True. So Johnny lived in the doctor's house all winter and helped take care of other people who were sick. When spring came, Johnny was ready to leave Moretta. He knew that his friends would look after his orchard, and he wanted to find new places to plant new orchards. He took his Bible with him and put the tin cooking pan on his head. He promised Dr. True he would come back someday. I'm going to pause this here. This is going to be part one of Johnny Appleseed. And then you'll have to look for the next video for part two of Johnny Appleseed by Eva Moore.